Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at search patterns that you can use for awfully slow warfare. I mean, anti-submarine warfare. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. So what we have today is a couple different platforms for the purposes of searching. We also have some intelligence suggesting that there's some sort of enemy sub in this massive chunk of ocean here. So what we need to do is we need to try to find and identify that sub. And of course, you know, if it's a hostile sub, we'll go ahead and uh, drop a couple torpedoes right onto it. Because, you know, why not? So one of the things we need to think about is how are we going to arrange our assets so that we can cover, first of all, the most territory, and second of all, so that we can have the best coverage so that they can't slip through. Now, unfortunately for us, this is a huge area to try to search here. And unfortunately, again, our ships are relatively slow, especially if you're going to be using their best anti-submarine warfare tools at their disposal, such as the Tudor, Tudor Ray Sonar. Ah, can't talk today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, take this uh, ship here and we'll demonstrate the different patterns. We'll test them out and then we'll see exactly what happens against other pieces. So um, one thing I've noticed is I've somehow broken this. So I'm just going to go fix that real quick. <laughs> All fixed. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and fix it. So the first pattern we're going to take a look at is what I like to call the raster pattern. Now, the raster pattern is uh, simply, uh, the word you probably will hear is a stacked ladder. The basic idea here is we're going to cover a zone, and then we're going to come down and then cover another zone. If you want to think about it another way, I always think of it kind of like the typewriter. So I'm going to grab my little ship here. I'm going to go ahead and set this pattern up real quickly here. We're just going to go ahead and set this one up again. I like to call this one a raster pattern. It's a little old-fashioned. But if you want to, you can also call this the stacked ladder. So what we're going to do is these long positions here. And then, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to try to make it so that this is like this. Now, the bad news for us is, is that this distance is so high. I'll go ahead and I'll put a victory one back to the center here. That the, since the distance we're spending over here is so long, a really creepy sub could basically wait for go silent as we come by and then go ahead and make a bunch of noises. They'd run out. And unfortunately, um, we don't have to deal with that typically. But you never know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and order him to go about as quick as he can go safely and still be able to hear things. So I'm going to go ahead and call up 10 knots here, and I'm going to go ahead and order him to go ahead and avoid cavitation at all costs. If you go too fast, you can't use his toe to ray sonar, which is a kind of a buster. So one of the reasons I really like this particular pattern is if you know the particular enemy you're dealing with is going across a certain path, you can actually make this pattern all the way down that path and try to kind of catch them early. So now that he's busy with that, let's go ahead and grab our sub and get him ready to go. So with this one, I'm going to use what I call the sawtooth pattern. Now, the sawtooth pattern is exactly as it sounds. It's similar to this, except we're constantly changing direction to try to improve our TMA situation. So what I like to do is kind of visualize two different points. I'm going to grab my little F3 key. I'm going to move towards the first point, and then I'm going to go ahead and move back towards the other point. So we're going to make a zigzag across our expected zone here. So I'm going to have them zigzag this way. 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 So we have a pattern that kind of looks a little bit like a sawtooth. Now, if you know that somebody's in a very concentrated area, this is an amazing technique. And this is also extremely effective because if you make these zigzags nice and small, I guess I could call them tacks if you want to think about it another way, you also have the ability to not have much time spent where your baffles are pointing the wrong direction. That's the part that you can't hear. So this is another pattern. Now, these two patterns are very, 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 very similar, but this one has the added benefit because when you switch direction and you're doing TMA analysis, it makes it easier to pinpoint a passive target. So now that that's set, let's go ahead and put this guy to work for our last pattern. Let me go ahead and hide all my movements here, because unfortunately, while that's uh, super duper helpful, it doesn't help us at all. So I'm going to grab uh, Miles O'Keefe here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, get him moving. So for him, I'm going to use another pattern. I'm going to use what they call an expanding box pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start him here, and I'm going to go ahead and take it out just a tiny bit. Now I'm going to go out a little more, and then I'm going to go out a little more, and I'm going to go out a little more, and I'm going to go out a little more. The reason I really like this pattern is uh, if you've detected something at some point, you can use this as a way to sort of try to reacquire where that particular target disappeared to. The downside, of course, is look at how much time we're spent on each one of these legs, making it much, much more difficult. Now, because my aircraft is a P-8, which is a very modern, uh, basically, maritime patrol aircraft, we don't have to worry about things like MAD. Uh, in the old days, we'd always fly really, really low, so we could use MAD sensors. Now, we're going to go ahead and uh, let this run on its own, and then we're going to bring some missions into it, so I can kind of show you how you can sort of play with this. So let's go ahead and unpause. Now, some of you are immediately going, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you tell this guy to go the right speed? Um, I don't remember telling him to go the right speed, but luckily, he's at 10 knots, so I'm good. This guy, 10 knots, avoid cavitation, he's good. Now, remember, I have two different types of helicopters at my disposal, which brings us to the last uh, one of the two patterns that I'd like to use, and that's called the barrier. So what you're going to do is basically you're going to set up two different items, and you're going to have them run a constant pattern back and forth to constantly scan along that line. Consider that like your last line of defense kind of a thing. The way I'm going to set that up, actually, and I'll go ahead and I'll cancel out this a little mission here, is I'm going to go ahead and create two little uh, reconnaissance points. I'll create one here. I'll go ahead and create one here. This will be my patrol region. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a mission. 
we're going to go call this uh, ASW air helicopter or something like that. Heli. Boop, boop, boop. Set it over to patrol mode. And we're going to go ahead and set this to ASW patrol. I'm going to press the OK button. So what I'm going to do now is grab my two Ocean Hawks. And I'm going to make sure um, usually one of these on station at a time is going to be more than enough for this. And of course, I'll allow him to go go exploring all he needs to do. He's going to do a station throttle that cruise, which seems a little uh, kind of weird. But it actually works really, really well if you're trying to cover really long distance. If you switch it to loiter, they never actually get to the other side before they have to come back to the base, which doesn't do anything for us. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go under our Mission Doctrine WRA here. You notice he's got active radar. That's okay. Uh, we can leave this on. Of course, we tip off where we are. If we disable that, of course, that means we can't do uh, periscope searches. Anybody dumb enough to stick their head up during uh, this kind of an operation, they deserve to get spotted by a periscope search. But the other thing I'm actually going to do is flip on sonar as well, because I do want him to use his dipping sonar to take a listen every once in a while. These guys are good to go. These guys are good to go. And if you take a look here, I've got my two points. So what I'm going to do is what they call repeatable loop, which is going to cause them to constantly go back and forth along this line. Now, I have no idea where the sub is in the water down here. So if I repeat my loop and make it too big, I'll never get over here by the time the guy comes the other direction. One of the reasons I love this pattern is you can actually build one of these patterns and use this tool of the repeating loop to actually have them follow the whole pattern constantly. Now, this is super fun if you have like 800 airplanes or something like that, but I don't. So uh, we're going to have to kind of deal with what we have there. Single aircraft, um, those are my patrol areas. Prosecution, I'm not going to mess with or anything like that. You can define that as a prosecution. Repeatable loop sounds perfectly good to me. Go ahead and click that button, and now they have work to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed up time a little bit. Remember, this is ASW. That's awfully slow warfare. And we're just going to kind of kick everybody. All right, guys, have fun. All right, begin. So the first guy here, Miles O'Keefe, is uh, kind of concentrating in here, and he's going to do an expanding box. Now notice, he is not dropping sono buoys. Now if we really want to use something like this properly, we really have to be dropping sono buoys along the way. So what do I do? Well, if you remember, I created this little mission outside, and I'm going to put that mission to use. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control F1, I'm going to do ASW, I will do a Patrol 2, we'll call this ASW Patrol, that sounds good for me. We'll go ahead and grab this guy, and I'm going to go ahead and add him to the target here. We only want one of these on station at a time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let him do his piece here. However, what I'm going to do is grab him one more time, and I'm just going to redraw that fancy pattern that I created earlier. So I'm going to grab him, put it here. We're going to do one of these. We're going to do one of these. And that way, even though he's on a patrol mission, he will now automatically drop out the sun buoys as he's kind of ripping around inside this particular region. And we'll see exactly. You're probably asking who's going to get caught first. I don't know what the sub is. So now what he'll do is he'll go ahead cruising now, constantly scanning. Now, one thing you probably notice is he dropped himself down to this little tiny low speed. I don't want him to do that. I want to keep his speed up so that he can cover more terrain. So now he's going to speed up. But notice, he's now making a path of sun buoys in the path that I asked him to travel, which means I'm going to get this crazy little whoop, 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 whoop kind of pattern all along the way. I feel really sorry for that sub now because you know he's going to set one of these things off. Speed up time. I got to love my ASW. Got him. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Attention all units, investigate. Attention all units, investigate. So in this case, you could see that he went right across my barrier that I was starting to build. Now, let's say he was here. He would have gone up and bumped into my barrier here as well. But since I made my barrier so wide, there's no way he could have transited the zone without accidentally bumping into one of these particular options. Now, as you know, these will slowly start dying over time, which is perfectly fine. That's, again, part of the fun. So everybody, let's go. Let's investigate. Let's investigate. Oh, We've got a confirmation. Uh, let's see here. The guy is a Echo One, and his uh, depth he's probably very deep. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's, yeah, he's 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 underwater. He's underwater. So now, we, of course, we have to ask ourselves: um, now that we've identified a target, do we want to prosecute? Well, uh, this is modern times, of course. Uh, dropping a torpedo through the front windshield of a CIS submarine is a great way to start World War III. So unfortunately, um, we're not going to be able to uh, drop that one. What? Wait, 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 wait. Good thing they're on red team and not with a CIS, which means they're gone. <laughs> Let's see who gets them first. Uh, I think it's going to go to the P-8. The P-8, of course, uh, when you drop torpedoes from such a stupid high altitude. I believe they have to come with a parachute. I don't remember if you're allowed to drop them at that altitude. Nope. So we have to actually order this guy to come down to normal people altitude so that he can uh, prosecute the target, so to speak. Ha-ha, <laughs> come get some. Now, in old times, when you're going against, you know, really, really bad sonar systems, and you have to kind of do this the hard way, you know, this, this is a good way to do it and show you a bunch of different patterns. So Miles O'Keefe is uh, lining himself up here, about 300 feet above the water. 
I'm going to drop two because, you know, these are LA, these are Mark 54s. I don't want to give this guy too much. We'll go ahead and switch to the other team and go take a watch at some Tom Clancy vision here. Actually, we'll do God's IB. That's much safer. We'll switch over to Tom Clancy vision and let's see what happens here. And we'll go ahead and click on the sub here. He's just chilling. He's just chilling. Here comes Miles O'Keefe. LHT's in the water. This guy's going to go, what? I was just chilling. This isn't fair. Look at this. There's the turn. There's the turn. He's taking the turn. He's taking the turn. Meanwhile, the other light, light, white white torpedo went completely by him. Oh, boy. That's a Mark 50. So hopefully this was a helpful video as far as showing you some of the different patterns. Um, that worked too well. Keep in mind, you don't always get the benefit of being able to do something like this. But keep in mind, if we just had traditional passive sonar ships, you could basically use these different patterns in different ways as a way to try to identify where a sub is. Other than that, enjoy.